I think being a good broadcaster is, and being a good interviewer is exactly like being a good person. Like, do the work on yourself. <laughs> no worry. Because a lot of people get into this business because they want the fame or they want the excitement and they think it's fun. And that's all true. But if you want to be like a killer at this, you know, how are you going to know them, the audience? How are you going to know the person you're sitting across from your subject if you don't even know you? Mm -hmm. And the truth is, I mean, I've said this to lots of people and most don't want to do the work and most people will just flame out. That was George Strombolopoulos giving me advice on how to be a good interviewer. His philosophy is all about knowing oneself in order to connect and understand others. But that's just, that's just part of it. I wanted to know how to get a good interview. And I wanted to know how the pros do it. Part of this has to do with me overcoming my fear and being able to have a natural conversation with people on another level with strangers mainly because there's nothing worse and more embarrassing than reviewing tape after an interview and seeing the disaster unfold before your eyes. Most of us are just starting out and this is probably one of the most important components to this career path that we've chosen, interviewing people. So I thought what better way to learn how to interview people than to interview people who interview people for a living. I sat down with Tom Power, who hosts Q on CBC, Josie Dye from Indy 88, Raina Doris, who hosts Mornings on CBC Music, George Strombolopoulos, who hosts his own shows, Strombo Show and House of Strombo, and Rudy Blair of Rudy Blair Entertainment Media, who also worked for over 20 years at 680 News as the music and entertainment reporter. And here are some things that they taught me about the art of the interview. Well, I'm lucky enough to work with a lot of really great producers, so I'm not in it alone, right? So they are doing intense, intense research. Oftentimes they're talking to the guests beforehand. They're pre-interviewing them. They're finding out what the most interesting thing is. They're talking to other people about these people. So the first step is being prepared. A lot of things go into prep, the prep process, okay? You have to do a lot of research. Find out what your subject's about, who they are, what they like. You have to know where you want this interview to end up, what the outcome is, the story that you're looking for. So all of that comes from doing your research. But you don't want to be too prepared. There's like a fine line. Um, you want to know about them and their history, but you want to find out things and be curious at the same time. I always say it's like half Larry King. Larry King knew nothing about who he was interviewing, um, but it's half Larry King. Because still, I still think you need to have that oh my God, I'm, what am I gonna say next moment? And you know that about the person. So the next step is questions. Now, this is something I definitely struggle with because you know I'm too afraid of asking like basic questions or questions that people have already asked, but you also don't wanna overstep your boundaries with questions. And also keep in mind, what do people wanna hear? What are questions that people are thinking? You know, doing research and prepping, um, it's, it's hard because like you see all the other interviews and you don't want to ask the same typical questions. That's something that I'm like, I really try to dig deeper. Well, look, I recognize that uh, if I'm going to ask somebody 10 questions in an interview, uh, four of the questions I'm going to ask, everybody's going to ask. But that's okay because those are interesting things. Yo, why'd you make this movie? Right? Mm -hmm. Uh, another three of those questions, really experienced people are going to ask. People who really either have done the work or whatever. So now you're at seven. Three remaining questions, those are mine. Okay. Those are ones that other people can't do because they don't have my life. They don't have my experiences. They didn't do my work. They don't have the, the, um, the, the catalog of interviews I've done. So I'm really not worried about hitting ten home runs. Okay. You don't win games like that, right? I mean, you do, but no one actually does that. Uh, Jay said it once, I think. Well, it depends on the interview. I have really unique interviews where I ask them about different artists sometimes for Throne of Glory. And um, I show I used to do Josie's Top 20. I, um, I would try to find out what artists they like. So I don't want to do like, what's your inspiration? That's just such a plain, boring question. But I want to say, hey, when you were on tour in 2013, you toured with Cake. And I know he's from here. Did you guys have any connection? Like you want to find those weird connections where they can tell a story that they've never told before. Is this information retailable? 
So if you heard this on the radio this morning, would you be like later that day, be like, oh, I heard this today. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that interesting? With the questions, you want to be able to set up a conversation where your subject can answer it with a story of some kind. Now I've learned not all questions have to be outrageous, but you do want to be creative when it comes to when you when, you, when it comes down to it. And stay away from open-ended questions, questions that answer themselves or just the most obvious questions. Yes or no questions are the like the worst. When I hear people asking yes or no questions during an interview, it like makes me want to like jump into the screen and be like, don't, because it just kills the conversation. Do you like do you like dogs? No. Why? Cause. Okay. Like it's over <laughs> like that. So yeah, I guess you can always uh, ask those sort of basics. If you have some questions you will always know or like in your back pocket that will open a conversation, you're good to go. Try to be specific with it and have fun. So when getting into the interview or just about just before you do start asking questions, you want to make sure that the flow of the interview goes well, right? And part of that is making sure your setup is on point. The setup has to be great. If you're just cold, turn the microphone on, let's go. Mm -hmm. It's you don't know how valuable those moments are before you actually hit record. I just feel like you and I are just two people talking and if I can just have this feeling in my, all of my interviews, I try to set up a situation at the very beginning where they know that this is a little bit different. They know that this is a little bit, uh, I'm not overwhelmed, I'm not overblown that they're here, I'm not disrespectful that they're here, because sometimes I find some arts journalists might hate musicians, you know, I don't hate them, um, I don't adore them, I don't think they're gods, I don't use terms like gods, I think you're just a person doing a pretty cool thing and let's talk about it. So it's not easy starting a conversation with strangers and it not being awkward. That's why the setup is so important. You have to make sure people feel comfortable enough to open up to you because they usually have their guard up. So these first few moments, is it's so important to get that connection right away if you can and just be as honest as you can. One thing you can also do before you start your interview is just like talk about what do you have for breakfast? That's one, that's some people use that as their uh, mic check because it's like, I don't know, what do you have for breakfast? A boiled egg. I was supposed to have two, but one cracked when I put it in the pot. I don't yeah. know if that ever happens to you. Yes. Okay. See, and you're already like, that could start a conversation, right? If you can make somebody really comfortable, they can end up talking about so many different things. And that's what happened with Phil Collins. He's talking about, he, he went into trying to get Genesis back together again. He talked about divorcing the wife through the fax machine. Like, he was talking about all these things because he was comfortable with me enough. I mean, you have to make a connection with somebody as quickly as possible. How do you establish um, a relationship when it comes to somebody who you've yeah. maybe never uh, interviewed before? Well, people are really paranoid. And I understand why they're paranoid. So you have to make sure that you create a space where they feel comfortable and, the, and to, to share, but also that you're not going to hose them. Because, like, honestly, what does an actor owe you? It owes you, owes you nothing. Right. It owes you a good performance in a movie. A songwriter owes you a good performance in a movie. They don't owe shit aside from that. If you think about it, sitting down mm -hmm. with someone and going, sing me a song. If I sat down with your grandmother and said, hey, you know that song you're, you sang growing up, you know, in Toronto or whatever it is, sing me that song. She might be like, who the fuck are you? Why would I do that? So a lot of my work was just trying to make people feel comfortable enough to they share something with me. And it's not about being manipulative, it's not about taking advantage of them and like understanding the ethics of that too. Like, why am I talking to these people? Why do I want them to feel comfortable? What is the goal of taking this thing? And the goal for me was I want to understand this story so I can better understand this person so we can all sort of better understand one another. Now just remember, everybody's nervous. You're gonna start off nervous, but if you focus on being in the moment, eventually you start off nervous, but you end, you end, you end up forgetting you were nervous in the first place. And this is definitely something that is true. When I was doing these interviews, I was so nervous in the beginning. And I would often admit to how nervous I was. I'm nervous right now. I'm gonna let you know. Why? I just, I just, oh, don't be. I'm just nervous. Put it, put it away. Okay, yeah, okay. Don't be nervous. Feel good? Yes, I feel good. Cool. Well, Frazzled and I'm extremely nervous, but this is, uh, this nervous, is great. What are you, why are you nervous? Thank, I mean, cause- Are we uh, recording right now? Yes, we're recording. What are you nervous about? Um, you know, I'm interviewing 
you know, a uh, very professional interviewer, Tom Power. Right. CVC. Yeah. Yeah, you really know your stuff. Yes, um, I don't know about that, maybe. So, because I'm really nervous right now, yeah. can, you, can you tell from my body language? No, you're no? Okay. Yeah, you're okay, good. No, no, with camera. You don't have to be nervous with me, but you know, like with people, with actual people. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, they're all very nice and being like, you don't have to be nervous. And it's true. You don't really have to be nervous, but it's easier said than done, for sure. Let's talk about like intimidation and comfort zones. So, how did you deal with nerves, especially when you're interviewing, like, maybe you're like someone you've watched as a kid on TV and now you're like, you get to sit in front of them, like Rick Mercer, for example. I'm not sure if you were nervous for that interview, but what do you kind of do for nerves? What do I do for nerves is a good question. Or, or, yeah. You know, it's, 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 it's some, of, some of it's a mental thing. Uh, Shad, who used to host the show, he was on a couple of weeks ago and we talked a little bit about this, that like, when you first come, there's, I am so nervous to even kind of do this right. I'm a little nervous now, and I'm guessing you are too, right? So I think just understanding that both parties are a little freaked out is helpful, you know? They're, that you guys are both sort of performing a little bit, and it's a bit of an uncomfortable, unnatural thing to do to sit down and talk to one another like this. And let's not pretend it isn't. I had to do, uh, not had to, I got to. I got to do the red carpet for the Canadian Country Music Awards uh, back in like, September. It doesn't feel, that's not that long ago. It feels like it was a long time ago. Um, and one of the things with that was like, I'm not, a, I don't know, I'm not a country music expert. Like, right. I had to like learn all, a bunch of that stuff for this interview. And it was the kind of thing where I was interviewing, I think over the course of an hour, I interviewed maybe 15 people. So it was like people coming up. We had, I was watching a guy with a countdown. If I had like one question left, if I had 30 seconds left, I'm watching him, I can like see who's coming back. I'm having cards handed to me for like, and it's, so I, I was terrified. And the person, who did they start me with? Who was my first person? No, Shania no. Twain. Oh, and I was just like, no. okay, I'm so scared. Like I was like, shaking and you couldn't see it, but like my hands were shaking. And I, my first thing I had to do was present Shania Twain with two awards. And I was like, I am not gonna make it to this. And, at part way through, you realize that you're like, well, hey, I'm not like, it's going fine. Just remember, these people are just people. As Rudy put it. Uh, Rick James, um, God rest his soul, super freak. Um, <clears throat> he always said, just remember, uh, I'm just like you and like everybody else. I drop my pants, sit on the toilet and take a shit just like you. Do. And that's the absolute truth. These people are not gods. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not, they're not, um, they're not curing cancer, you know, they're, they're not parting the Red Sea, they're people. Now, it's really important to listen. This is the hardest part and where a lot of great conversation opportunities are missed. You have your questions in front of you and you're thinking about the next thing to say. Don't, don't do that, okay? You have to stay in the moment and actually digest what they're saying to you. Like the bottom line is like, listen to the other person, right? Because if you've got a list of questions and then you get this answer from somebody that opens up a whole new line of questioning, sometimes you need to like jump on that. Cause if it's really interesting people, like the questions that somebody is listening, like if somebody's watching it or listening to it, they're going to hear this piece of information. They're gonna be like, well, tell me more about that. And if you're like, okay, that sounds neat. Moving on to the next thing. Like, you know, it's unsatisfying if you're listening to that, right? So, so listening as the interviewer is so important. Even though I know you've got this in front of you, mm -hmm. try not to use that. Okay. The reason why is because if I'm speaking with like, right now you're, you're paying attention to me. Yes. If you're too busy paying attention to this piece of paper, right. you might miss something that I've said. And then you might turn around and ask me a question and I'm going, why well, just answer that? Right. And I've seen that many times many times and it's because again they're too busy you know looking to follow the pattern i don't follow the pattern but only with great preparation comes the ability to to really really listen because you know that no matter what they say you're ready for it the goal is to keep the conversation organic and the only way to do that is by listening to what they're saying being interested and jumping on the great interesting facts that they may have told you in those moments if you don't listen the interview will come off robotic, and that's not good. Tom actually gave me some good points on how he stays focused and 
grounded during an interview. I, I try and meditate. I, I touch the table a little bit, which I don't think I've ever told anybody before. Uh, I touch the table just to kind of remind myself that it's here, that I'm, I'm not fully living in my head, that you are here, that this is an actual thing, that there are walls, that there's a ceiling, and that we're here together. Now, focusing on what they're saying can be difficult, especially when you're interviewing someone who's a rambler. With interviews, sometimes people kind of like go on the long tangents. Mm -hmm. And from what we're learning in school, they're saying never like interrupt. But do you have a way, like a technique, where you can kind of veer people into back into answering your question? You know yeah. What I mean? yeah, it's hard. Um, oh, it's so hard that sometimes they will, they'll go off on a massive tangent. And if you're live on the air, um, the only thing you can do is say, oh, you know what, we have to go to a commercial break, but I want to hear more of this. And then listen to it in the commercial break and <laughs> don't air it. I've done that before. Um, I will not interrupt them very often. I'll let them talk um, and then uh, realize that, yeah, you have to just get to the other question. Sometimes they will talk forever and there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, most interviews this day and age are taped. It's very rare that you're live on the air unless you have a morning show. So um, most other day parts are taped, which is so wonderful because you're able to edit a lot of that stuff out. Um, also just the pre-planning, telling them I need to get to this, 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 and this, and we have 10 minutes. So, But you don't want to say that because right. if you say that, someone's going to say like a one word question answer. You don't want to do that. Uh, unless you know that person talks a lot, don't limit that. I'd say just let them talk. People want to hear them talk. Let them talk. A lot of times, you know, um, interviewers will interrupt when the person's speaking. You don't want to do that because they could be going into something that is gold and then you cut them off and it's just like, uh, uh, they, they lost a train of thought and you, you know, you're never going to get that moment back. Most times you will have to rephrase the question until they answer it for you. Eventually, hopefully they get the hint. But um, never interrupt them. Just let them talk because at the end of the day, you're interviewing them for a reason. So let them talk, edit it in post. Now when it's all said and done, the real focus here is your audience. Who's listening or who's watching? You need to focus wholly on the people who are listening to your interview or hearing or watching your interview. That's why you're there. You're there as a surrogate for them. You're not there for your own ego. The more you can take your own ego out of it, the more you can take, is this gonna make me look good? Does this person like me? Are we gonna be friends afterwards? Is my boss gonna like this? The more you can remove all of this and just think, what does the person in their car in Brandon, Manitoba want me to ask? When it comes to the audience, I have a hard time like knowing what do they want to hear when I'm doing an interview. So, cause like, it's like, I know what I wanna hear and what I wanna know, but is that what the audience wants to know? It depends on how plugged in you are to that. Um, that's always an, a really difficult uh, thing to know, 100%, because audiences change and people change in a way. But what do people really care about? They really care about getting through the day. They care about making sure their family is okay if they have it. They have the same anxieties and stresses that you do. So people are philosophically the same. The information that you get needs to somehow be relevant to them. And you have to remember, too, you're preparing an interview for somebody who's maybe never heard of this person before. I'm not trying to make myself a star when I do an interview. Like, I'm genuinely curious about the thing, who they are, and can we be good company for the person watching this? So whoever's watching this right now, do they feel a connection to the thing we're talking about or to us? Now comes the fun part. You have to be ready for the bad interview. We all have bad days and we're all gonna have bad interviews. I mean, yeah. you guys formed, uh, Billy Bob, you, you guys formed only in the last couple of years, right? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> How so? I don't know what you mean by that. Well, did, when, when, did the, when did the band form? I'm not sure what that means. Oh, well, when did you guys first start playing together? Uh, we started about two years ago. and. Uh, we haven't stopped since we uh, once since we got the ball rolling. <laughs> uh, and and you, you've you've made three records in that time. We've actually made about five records. 
bad interview? Like, I'm sure you may have had like no. a bad. No, no never? never, never had a bad one. Okay, so I've had, I've had so <laughs> many bad interviews. I have a bad interview a day. I okay, think. Yeah. so how do you recover from that? Um, at the beginning, when people were maybe a little bit standoffish for me, I was I found that really hard, and I would kind of just speak more quickly and get a little bit freaked out. These days, I I try to project that. Um, if they if they're a little bit funny with me, I just kind of don't react to it at all. I don't give them a reaction that they deserve. If they're I mean if they made fun of me, I might say, "Hey, that's not very nice. Why why did you do that?" Because I also find that if you're really really famous, you're not really used to people doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, you're gonna bomb. It's gonna happen, but it's all about how you carry yourself through it. There's something really important about the bad interview. It's a learning experience. You learn what not to do next time. I had a really bad interview when I was first starting in radio, um, and it was with Brody Dahl, who is uh, Josh Homme's wife, and she had the band Distillers, and at the time, I wasn't confident enough to know what to do, so I just let it be horrible. In fact, I think she made fun of me on the radio as I was there live, and it was the worst, and I will never let that happen again. And now, if I have a really bad interview, I call them out. 100% I call them out. And usually what ends up happening, it would be great if they actually got into some sort of confrontation because that's always great radio, but they usually end up completely backing down and then trying really hard to be good. Sometimes a bad interview will happen. It's, it's something where sometimes people just don't vibe, you know, and that just happens. Or people just have bad days and there's nothing you can do about it. You just have to truck through it. You have to be brave enough to continue through it and find a way to end it on a high note. That's the key. Anybody can ask a difficult question, right? Anybody can. Can you ask a difficult question and have the interview continue? That's the art. Anybody can say, yo, do you do this? That's it, interview's over. But can you get to the, yo, you did this, um, and have them either answer or not answer, and then you get to ask another question? That's the art to me. Thanks for watching the keys to a successful interview. I hope some of this information helps.